Professor Bernard Hoffman invited me over here um, and I got that call, or should I say I was approached, like in October or November of last year. And um, I said, would you be willing to come over to Freiburg and do, you know, vocal clinics, you know, like you would usually do? I said, of course. The most important thing to realize about gospel, especially singing gospel, is that the technique is pretty much, I wouldn't say pretty much, it's all the same, even if you do classical or pop. You know, if you don't practice proper technique, you know, um, just like I was saying with the, um, with the choir earlier, subtle movements of the various muscles that enables the vocal apparatus to project the sound so that you won't hurt the vocal cords themselves. You know, trying to get volume out of the vocal cords. And the vocal cords already have their set volume by default, you know, so the rest is facial muscles, muscles in the neck area, of course the diaphragm as well. Um, but working, you know, the upper muscles in the, in the head area, nasal cavity, soft palate, um, the back of the tongue, you know, and, and what I do in my lessons, I have the student to realize that in order to project the sound, you have to, you know, practice proper palate posture, meaning soft palate posture, that's in the back of the, the mouth, which actually moves, you know, so when that arcs up, then you concave the tongue up under it in the back so that it can project the sound and bring it to the front of the face, you know, and that's also with filling the, um, the cheeks with sound as well. And I know that the cheeks of the face is something that every human being takes for granted. Because <laughs> we, we use them every day for talking, we never really think about using them for singing. talk about gospel, you know, gospel, the definition of gospel is called good news, you know, and um, good news is, is, uh, is um, one of the aspects of gospel that enables the human spirit to get energized, you know, and to get, um, a, 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 almost like a power surge, <laughs> you know, to energize the spirit itself. See if I like um Can we just try holding the last aha uh -huh, aha? Uh -huh. You ready? Uh, one, two, and go. You know, the close harmonies, you know, give the actual chord more more body, more beef. You know, the open harmonies, which is what we mainly have been doing, you know, it just, you know, gives the chord itself. But what makes it not boring is, is the fact that these harmonies are actually moving. 
In the case of the Davis sisters, the harmonies you know, were sometimes more stationary, which allowed them more time to use closed harmonies, you know, because um, when, when, you, when you get into the part of, you know, utilizing closed harmony to an extent or to an extreme, you know, then, you know, the audience, you know, yeah, it sounds nice, but, you know, it's almost like, where are you going with this? You know, so when the Davis sisters, um, they, they paved the way, you know, and like I mentioned um, um, yesterday in the, in the workshops, um, unfortunately, the Davis sisters have, you know, they, the, the, the way they left out of here was very sad. <laughs> All of them, you know, died very sad, you know, the horrible <laughs> deaths, you know, and it makes you wonder why. <laughs> Why, you know, even God even allowed that to happen. The Lord is blessed in me. The Lord is blessed in me. Right now, right now. The Lord is blessed in me. Right now, right now. Okay. Now I'm hearing you all very well, altos. If you can give me a little bit more, more volume, because because keep in mind, you I see some of you. You're still doing the Lord. No, the Lord, 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 Lord. One, two, altos by yourself. The Lord. Much better. It's a lot better. When I started Berkeley, it was four thousand dollars a semester, and um, that's very, very cheap compared to what it is now. You know, um, altogether after I finished the five years, I could have finished in four, but I caught myself doing the music ed and performance. And in my latter semester, once I found out I had to do this whole crop of performance proficiencies and I'd already finished the required proficiencies for the music ed degree, I just dropped the performance degree and just graduated as music ed. Um, altogether, I would say it was like 30,000, you know, total in my five years there, which unfortunately is one semester now at Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, a student's one semester Current students, one semester, is my whole five years there at Berkeley. Let's try it one more time. It's going to come together. It's going to come together. One, nobody like you, Lord, is real easy. <laughs> so you, you go, oh, this is walking the park. Yes, it is. <laughs> but this is a little bit more challenging. But I need you to, and don't stagger the rhythm. You're starting to stagger the rhythm a little too delayed. And keep in mind, the Lord is blessing me. Some of you are doing like blessing me. No, don't stagger it like that. It's like the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. See, so kind of speed the blessing me a little bit. Speed the blessing me up a little more. Okay, here we go. My mother was the classical, traditional type of reader, you know, reading. She could read anything, you know, sight read anything, you know, and just as long as, you know, it printed. And she had a good ear as well. But my father already had good ears, you know, because both of, you know, on both sides of his family, music existed. You know, his, grand, his father was a, a dynamic singer and his mother was a piano player, just pretty much by hobby, you know, not a serious piano player, but just by hobby. 
what she would do is she would play for like Sunday school at church or, you know, like they had this thing called Baptist Training Union, which is like a afternoon Sunday school, you know, and she would play for those type of things, you know, which is like, you know, reading hymns and stuff like that. <laughs> See how slow you did that? Speed it up. It's blessing me. Speed it up. The Lord is blessing me. Yeah. Don't bless me. Don't speed, don't slow it down like that. I didn't say that staggered. Here we go. One, two, everybody. Then. The Lord is blessing me. Yes, yes, yes. I had several teachers. Um, one teacher, uh, his name, has, I can't remember his first name. His last name was Pearson. And he's the one who found out about me having, you know, um, perfect pitch, you know, because he would play the piano. This was the attempt of my parents getting me to learn how to read. Because even before reading, music, my, my ears were already at a level where anything I hear, I could just like play it, you know, it didn't matter. And uh, what he would do, he would, um, uh, Mr. Pearson would turn my face to the wall and he would hit various notes on the piano and I would name them, including the octave in which they were in, you know. If there was a chord, I would name each note of the chord and I would even tell what chord it was, C chord or what have you. This is like at age seven. You know, I started playing at age four. Um, the teacher after him was um, a lady by the name of Cappy Corey. And she brought out most of the reading, you know, part, you know, in me because she wouldn't, she already was aware of my ears, but she didn't play the song for me. She would make me sit there and actually figure it out and read it, you know, which is the main objective of my parents. And I would say the other teachers would, would occur in elementary school, um, you know, um, um, Loretta Crowder as well as um, Judy Jones um, and Margaret Hall in junior high school, which forced me again, learning how to read, because <laughs> she was already aware of my uh, musical ability as well. And um, when I got to high school, you know, the reading factor, it was already there. So I, you know, I just simply finished, or I should I say continued to build upon what other teachers have already started. Yes. Yes, and see, so you have a, yes, so you have those fluffy cheeks like me. See, so again, you have the fluffy cheeks. Here we go. Well, the whole country of Germany is just so historical to me, you know, and and it's very, it's a beautiful place, you know, number one, you know, a lot of good sights, a lot of good food. <laughs> I have to factor in that food, quality food, may I add, <laughs> um, as well as great talent here in Germany, not only here at the school, but just in Germany period. It's a whole host of, a plethora of talent, you know, here that's, in my opinion, that deserves to be tapped into. 
you have that capability to, if you utilize, if you really look at my face, the Lord, I'm utilizing everything. You see, if you, you see my cheeks, I'm filling up not only with air, but also with sound, which, all, which in, enables it to what? Bring it to the front. <laughs> so I can do it. The Lord or the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, I'm still filling it up with, with, air, with, uh, with sound, but not as much because I'm not trying to yell it at you. But if I was, the Lord, see, that's like yelling at, actually, I'm really not hurting myself because that's within my range. Am I making sense there? You know, so again, watch my face. The Lord, as opposed to the Lord, it still carries. Well, back then, you know, Shreveport had, it was more of a community type of thing when I was younger, growing up there. And parents really stressed the importance of education and getting a good education. Not so much as, as getting a good job when you finish, but just so that you can survive, period. You know, um, doing well in public schools um, and, and hopefully in hopes that, you know, their son or their daughter would go ahead and take the next step and, and commence their collegiate years. And that's what I did. And I had parents that were very, very supportive. Unfortunately, nowadays, especially if you're referring to nowadays, <coughs> you know, the, the attention that I got from my parents, a lot of kids are not getting these days, you know, which constitutes, yeah, crime, then drugs, and even suicides. You know, um, you know, it constitutes a lot of um, negative stuff, you know, mainly because, you know, parents, unfortunately, I would say, have slacked a little bit, you know, for whatever reason that might be. You know, my personal opinion, you get a good education, you know, finish college, you know, you play your cards right in college, and I say this to my students in Berkeley, you play your cards right, you won't have to go walking to the job. The job will come to you. Yes, I did do some gigs, and I played for uh, a church when I was a student. And the name of that church was 12th Baptist Church. Um, it dates back into the um, earlier days of the first African meeting house uh, down on Beacon Hill. And um, uh, for, uh, 12th Baptist Church was, is one of the direct descendants from the first African meeting house. Um, people such as even Martin Luther King when he was a student at Boston University, attended 12th Baptist Church. Let's see, at that time I was doing $75 a Sunday, you know. Because at that time Berkeley was a lot cheaper and the cost of living even in New England was a lot cheaper. You know, um, other things I would do might, you know, constitute like 100, 150. Like keep in mind, we're talking about the, the, the decade of like 1980s, you know, so things were a lot cheaper, so therefore I didn't have to charge too much for services rendered. I guess if I didn't really be so focused at Berkeley, I would really go crazy, to be honest with you. You know, I depend, just like Berkeley depend on me, I depend on them too. I ain't gonna sit here and lie about it. Because, you know, before I met the missus, my, my only other wife was Berkeley. <laughs> Get what I'm saying? So, so I have to really keep, you know, uh, Berkeley up 
you know, running, you know, in a positive way so that, um, so that I can continue to empower the students. The gospel choir itself is almost as old as the school because the gospel choir started in 78, 79. You know, so right now the gospel choir is like close to 40 years old, you know, and the school is maybe like 70. You know, it's like 30 years younger than the school itself. You know, and that is, if I'm not mistaken, that's probably one of the only ensembles that has, you know, held its consistency and integrity for that length of time. When it started, it was just an extracurricular activity. And um, it was started by a young lady by the name of Lisa Harrigan, you know, who's still, you know, she's living, she's in New York right now. And um, after Lisa, um, then the other student director was David Chandler. And, you know, while he was still student director, that's when they were priming me to be student director. And when I became student director in the fall of um, um, 84, yes, yeah, fall of 84, that's when Gospel Choir became a part of the curriculum itself. And it became a yeah, two-credit yeah, two class because it meets twice a week. The future? is to keep doing what I'm doing, you know, and to keep empowering the, the lives of musical students like here at the school, um, as well as to even empower myself, you know. I mean, because my brain is like a sponge. I believe in, you know, keep, you know, in keeping reaching for higher, you know, heights in knowledge, you know, especially musical knowledge. You know, I've always welcomed musical challenges. Always. You can ask any of my students. <laughs> Even if the challenge gives me a run for my money, I will still give it my best shot, you know. So I, I, I could, you know, I, I would probably even say writing a book as well, which I have to stop procrastinating on <laughs> and get to work on it, you know, a book of my memoirs and life, even personal experiences, you know, um, you know, and to to empower somebody else's life as well, even through my teaching or even through um, my book that hopefully I will write one of these days. <laughs>